You are back in the shop with me today, guys. And this week on the channel, I'm gonna build my wife something she can propagate her plants in that also looks great on the wall. Stick around. I'm Stoner Erickson from Erickson Design Company, and let's build something. Ta -da! Hopping right into it, I'll grab this step ladder and pull a two by six by eight off of my wood storage. These wall mounted wood storage, I'll tell you what, they are really handy. Uh, they're about $59 for a set of two on Amazon. They'll be linked in the description below. Anything you buy off of my link in the description below, I'm gonna make a little bit of money and help support the shop. But the only problem that I find with these is that I kind of forget what's up here. So it's nice to see something up here and remember to look up here and use some of this wood that can get left behind up here. They hold about 460 pounds per set. So it's a really great solution to keeping some of my longer stuff up out of the way, but I need to remember that it's up there. I'll quickly go ahead and I'll set up my miter saw station. It's a wing out table that I got from the fix this build that guy's channel. I got the plants from him, then I built it. I'm going to be cutting these to 12 inches. Now that's shorter than my actual fence guide stop. So what I do is I measure over 12, pull my blade down, and then actually mark right on the saw. And then as I cut these one by one, I slide them to that line. It's a quick way to make repeatable cuts on my saw. And since I no longer need this set up all the way, I'll quickly break it back down and slide it away, turn the dust collection off. Next, over at my main workbench, I'm going to pre-drill three holes, one at the top and two on each side of the bottom. This will make it easy for me to attach it to the X-carve. Another way I save space with my X-carve, because it's such a big tool, is I built this folding table. You can find that in the link in the description below. It easily folds up and it has this really cool little cover to keep all the dust in. Using those pre-drilled holes, I'll screw it down and get my first carve set up. Then I'm going to home the machine. Now I worked on the actual carve time on this. This first one took an hour and 18 minutes. That was too long. So I sped up my feed and my speed rates and I got it down to about 36 minutes. So I'm making seven of these. So you can imagine this is an all day kind of running this machine to its max. It really wasn't a problem for this machine. It was a total carve time of about six hours and 40 minutes for all eight of them. Once it's done carving, I'll pull off the front and I'll slide the enclosure back. And then this is one of my favorite parts is just cleaning up the dust with my dust right dust collection. I, you know, I can't say enough great things about it. It was one of my dream tools and I'm so glad I got it. I'll check my carve, make sure it's nice and smooth, check my tolerances, and then we'll just carve them and stack them right up. Now at the very end here, I'm going to clean off all of the dust that I can, and then I'm going to fold the actual X-carve back down. This saves a ton of room in my shop. Now back over at the chop saw, I don't have to wing it out anymore because now I'm down to this smaller footprint, but I did it like a top carve, only about a quarter inch deep, and so I had a guideline so they're all the same. When this saw is not flipped out, I have about 30 inches over to my bandsaw and you know I have 10 feet to the other side but it makes quick easy work not have to fold it out every time just flip the dust collection on and keep on cruising. When I mock this up in easel I left it shy to the left side of the actual carve so I'm just going to take a chisel and I'm going to knock that 16th of an inch right off of it. And I really wanted to use the bandsaw to cut out these rounded ends on the bottom, but my blade was all jacked from cutting plexiglass. So this jigsaw will do. It's funny I geek out on so much dust collection, but you can see this jigsaw in a lot of my videos. It just makes so much dust and I don't even think about throwing a vacuum on it or anything. Kind of weird. Next, I'm going to move over to my router table. Now I have a flush cut bit with a bearing and a collet on the top, and I'm going to really hold on to these. These actually wanted to kick out on me quite a bit. And the reason that I don't carve all the way through on the X-carve is it saves a ton of time only carving down a half an inch, then taking it to the router table, zipping it through. That process saved me about 20 minutes on each carve. That's a lot of time to save. Next, we'll jump right over to the rigid oscillating sander. We'll give all those edges a nice freshen up with a 120 grit. We'll round over the tops and make them all look super nice. 
Now, we're not using the Jet 1632. We're not using Orbital Sander here. We want these to be kind of rough, uh, look kind of rustic. So we're actually just gonna give them a quick hand sand with 220, and then we're gonna break all the edges. It's important to break all the edges because you know they can catch on something and chip out. So I just wanna soften those up a little bit, but I am going for a modern look. So I do wanna have them really square. So I'll just break those edges, clean up the inside, and give it a nice, clean hand sand. Now, I am giving these to my wife. I am gonna be selling these, so I wanna always put my branding on the back of anything that I make. I really got kinda of tired of carving it in there and putting epoxy, so I got these really cool stamps online. Next, we're gonna start setting up to stain these guys, but I do wanna say when I started this video, I was at 2,135 subscribers, and I checked and we're at 2,182, so if you're subscribed, thank you guys for watching. I used my table saw with a scrap piece of wood and some paper. Then I'm going to go check my paint storage. I don't want to really buy anything for this. I just want to use what's in the shop. And I was able to find a white, a red, a blue, and a walnut. And since these are kind of old, I'm really going to mix them up when I stain them. I didn't want the red to be super red, so I kind of wiped it off pretty quick. Same with the walnut. I didn't want it to be too dark. I definitely wanted the grain to come through, and I didn't want to sand it afterwards. And I think my favorite is going to be the white. The white to me, it you know, the grain peeks through. It's just so lovely and so elegant. And my actual logo stands really proud out the back. Not that they'll ever see that. It's going to be up against the wall. And then I went with a natural. And then I went with the Erickson Design Company blue that I had left over. Dang, those are starting to look good. I'm going to be using a 30-minute quick set lacquer spray. So I'm actually going to make myself a little paint booth. And I'm going to grab a couple pieces of wood and some blocks to kind of prop them up so they're leaning towards me. Then I'll shake that lacquer really, really well. And I'll generously put it on a thin coat. I did this about three or four times from all the different angles. And here you can see that white Ericsson Design Company logo coming through. Super nice. Now on Amazon, I got these little beakers. They were 16 bucks for 16 so a dollar each. And I had this leftover leather wax twine. I'll have links to all the products I use in this video down in the description below, so go check them out. I'm gonna take a 16th inch drill bit and I'm first gonna drill in straight, then I'm gonna bend the bit and I'm gonna get an angle out of the top. Now, I wish I would have done this before I stained because I kind of fudged this one up a little bit here. I had to touch it up with a little bit of the red, but that's par for the course when you're kind of just going on the fly here. I'm going to screw a two and a half inch screw down into my workbench so I can make a set screw so as I tie these they'll all come out generally the same size. I have such fat fingers so this is kind of hard for me to do but I'm going to do a bow loop on the end and then I'm going to line them up. I'm going to re-tie the other side and then after I'm done tying I'm going to pull it down and mark the actual bench with my pencil. That way I kind of have a guide. And guys if you like fun and creative videos like this hit that subscribe button. Do it. Do it now. Plus, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your comments, and I totally comment back. Go down and check it out. And if you know someone who would like a video like this, share it. It really helps the channel when you share these videos. Now, I had to put a little thought into how to add the beakers to the wood. Wood's going to expand and contract, so I thought CA glue would be great. Unfortunately, my bottle of the actual glue top broke off, but that's not going to stop me. A couple of drops down in the actual groove, a little CA go on the back of the glass, and I'll push the actual beaker down towards the bottom of the actual cutout. That way it has a little support from what it's kind of resting on, the ledge. I'm using my shop apron to make sure that the backside is wiped off really well. Another great use for a shop apron, I have this shop apron that I wear all the time in the link in the description below as well. It's a great gift option for woodworkers, bakers, painters, uh, cooks even. I actually really love it and love how it fits. It's really, really very comfortable. Now I'm going to turn these over to my wife and let her do her magic. Another fun, creative video coming out of the shop. What a cool project. I mean, idea, design, and build. That's the whole theme of this channel, guys. And if you like fun and creative videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Do it and do it now. Plus, leave me a comment, guys. I'd love to hear from you, and I'll totally comment back. Thanks for watching once again. I'm Stoner Erickson from Erickson Design Company, and we built something. Ta-da!